All right. Good morning, everybody. It's a uh, kind of a gloomy uh, day on uh, here in Houston, and it's Chris Mark from a sniper's perspective. First off, I want to thank everybody for uh, actually taking the time to listen or watch uh, my uh, podcast. Last 24 hours, I've had, gosh, I think about 5,000 people spend the time to, to listen and watch, which is, is, to me, pretty darn amazing. So thank you so much for that. And uh, so it seems like some people have interest in hearing amusing stories from my days as a sniper and in the military. So I thought I would bring you one uh, in particular, I think is, is kind of amusing today. So uh, here we go without further ado. You know, years ago, uh, before I was a sniper, I was an infantry Marine, uh, just, you know, a regular old grunt, you know, pounding the ground as an 0311 infantry Marine uh, rifleman. I was just a basic rifleman uh, in, a, in a standard platoon. And I was uh, fortunate, I guess I was fairly good at my job, and I got selected to um, train with, the, uh, at the time, Her Majesty's Royal Marine Commandos. It's now His Majesty's Royal Marine Commandos, you know, the, the British Royal Marines. If you don't know anything about them, the U.S. Marines were actually formed kind of in the image of uh, Her Majesty's Royal Marines. They've been around about 100 years longer than the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, the U.S. Marine Corps as we all know, was founded in a bar, Tun Tavern, in 1775, uh, actually predates um, the Army, I believe. But the Royal Marines actually predate uh, the U.S. Marines by about 100 years. Uh, very, very tough men. So I had a chance to go over there. I'm going to share some slides with you guys. Again, I don't, I don't share a lot of these with a lot of folks, but, um, you know, pre pretty interesting times. And so uh, here is their... Their logo looks a little bit similar to what you might see with the Royal or with the uh, U.S. Marines. But uh, so we got a chance to work with the Foro Commandos and what's called the Kamakio Group uh, back in the days in, in Arbro, Scotland, where they were based out of Scotland. And uh, so we show up there in Scotland and I'll tell you, uh, I, I want to give you an image of what these folks are like. There's some tough, tough people. There's a Foro Commando right there. You know, when you think about Marines, um, I've had a chance to work with Marines all over the world. Uh, I'll tell you, the, the Royal Marines, tough, tough folks. Um, I've got the highest amount of respect for those guys. Uh, you want to talk about some rugged, very tough folks. I've worked with some of the other Marines. Uh, I'm not, you know, trying to denigrate Marine Corps brothers, but I've worked with the Greek Marines, not super impressed. Spanish Marines, not super impressed. Some of the other Marines, not super impressive, but the, the Royal Marines, Nothing but the highest respect for those men. I tell you what, very tough people. So here's a, a young Chris. Uh, if you can't tell, that is weather in Scotland. If you ever saw the movie Braveheart, and there's a joke in there, and the, kind of in the beginning he's talking, he's trying to date the uh, young lass, and he goes to pick her up, and the guy says, well, it's raining. And he goes, ah, it's a beautiful Scottish weather. The rain's kind of going sideways like. Well, that's pretty much uh, the, the weather as I saw it in Scotland. Just about every day we were there, it rained and we looked like this, like, uh, you know, soaked to the bone just about every single day. And that's that's me on the bottom. We showed up. Who knows? We were on some kind of training evolution there. So uh, here's kind of how it went. And, and I'm going to tell you kind of an amusing story. This is going to be a fairly short podcast, but it is, I think, kind of funny. So we fly in from Virginia. Um you know, we get to Arbor Scotland, probably about 20 hundred. It's a Friday, Friday evening. So we have the meet and greet on Monday morning. So we show up 20 hundred, which for you civilian types is 8 p.m. on a Friday evening. We get to the base and the base is pretty much empty. And so we walk through uh, the chow hall. And keep in mind, the, the Royal Marines, there are only about 7,000 of those. So they're pretty small bases compared to U.S. military bases. And they have a chow hall. And we walk in there, and there's this hulking, hulking uh, Royal Marine in there, and he's uh, swabbing the deck. He's mopping. And I walk up to him, and I go, hey, uh, can you tell us where you know the barracks or whatever are? And he looks at me, and he says in something guttural that to me sounds like this. And he kind of points, and I just kind of go, uh, thank you. And we kind of walked that direction. Well, I didn't know at the time what a Geordie was. <laughs> and anybody that's ever spent time, as I have now, in um, the United Kingdom and has spent time uh, up there, uh, Geordie's on the piss. Newcastle, England, which is where they make Newcastle brown ale, the people up there are called Geordies. 
and they have a very peculiar accent. And if you're not used to it, it is like a foreign language. I think it's probably like a foreign language to even people, a lot of people in England themselves. Uh, Brian Johnson from ACDC is a Jordy and listen to him talk. And he's, he's kind of refined the accent a little bit now, but uh, so couldn't understand this guy. We've, we were to find out later this Royal Marine. And when I say he was big, he played uh, for the NFL in Europe back when they still had that kind of farm team. He played for the London Monarchs. He was a huge hulking, hulking man. Very, very, very nice guy. Um, so we went to the barracks got dressed and everything. And like all good young Marines, we said, uh, you know what we ought to do? We ought to go out and meet the locals, which means, Hey, let's go find the local bar and, you know, go have a few drinks and see if we can pick up some local lasses. Right. And so, uh, we, you know, get a taxi, go out to a local bar called Bally's. It's still open. You can look it up just like it sounds Bally's. So we go out there and, uh, having a good time. We're having a few drinks, uh, having a few pints as they say over there, having a great time. And I'm talking to a young lass and all of a sudden I look over my shoulder and I see it, the inevitable fight happening. Um, a U.S. Marine is already mixing it up with a local. We've been there no more than an hour and there's a U.S. Marine throwing down with the local. So at this point, it's an inflection point, and this is where your morality is tested. I'm sitting there thinking, huh, I'm sitting here talking to this beautiful young Scottish woman. I've been here, you know, an hour, and things are going pretty well, but one of my brothers is in trouble, and he's fighting. What should I do here? Should I try to help my brother, or should I let that play out the way it is? And, should, and of course, I have to do the right thing, so... I go over there to help my brother and uh, I can tell it's getting pretty heated. The locals are not very happy. So I go and I grab him in a headlock because I can tell what I need to do is just kind of, we need to exit that situation pretty quickly. So I grab him in a headlock and I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to hold the crowd off. I'm, you know, I've got my hand up and I'm like, Hey guys, we're just, we're just leaving. We're just leaving. We're just leaving. And, you know, we're backing out. So now it's me and him and another Marine and we're backing out and they're backing us through what I think is the front door to get outside. Well, it wasn't, they were backing us into what looks like a ballroom or a conference room or something like that. So we go in there and next thing you know, here come about 10 or 12 locals and there are three of us in there. And Unlike you people that may be fans of Roadhouse or movies like that, um, in the real world, when you're outnumbered three to one, you're not going to win that fight. Okay, make no mistake, you're not going to win. So this guy comes running across to throw a punch, and I'm like, well, here we go. So I throw a punch at him, he throws a punch. Next thing you know, we're throwing down, doing the best we can. So, anyways, long in the short, this is what it looked like afterwards. So, of course, we have to take pictures of it. Um, this is just immediately afterward. I got kicked in the head pretty hard, got punched pretty hard. My buddy lost a couple of teeth. Uh, he got hit in the head pretty hard. Um, the guy that started the whole thing, you can't, he's not in the picture. He got banged up a little bit, but overall no worse for wear. Of course we had to take a few pictures. This is, you know, me pre tattoos. I was, you know, quite a bit younger there, but like all good Marines, we had to take pictures. Now, the funny part of the story, keep in mind, we had not met any of the Royal Marines yet. This is just one night at Bally's. So the rest of the weekend, we behave ourselves. We just stay in the barracks, do our thing. So come Monday morning, come Monday morning, my eye is completely swollen shut. I've got a couple of stitches in my head. My buddy has gotten his teeth, you know, fixed with some you know, temporary dental stuff. His eye is swollen shut. So our commander, because we're doing the formal meet and greet, has got us in the back of the formation. And you've got the Royal Marine commander up there with the whole company around and you've got the platoon of American Marines with us hiding in the back. And the Royal Marine commander up there, I think he was a major, gets up and he's doing his big, welcome to our American Marine brother, so happy to see you, blah, blah, blah. In about mid-sentence, he sees me because I'm pretty light-skinned with my swollen black eye, and he <laughs> looks at me, and he sticks his finger up, and he goes just like this. He points at me and goes, summons me up there. And I'm like, oh boy, here it goes. So... I walk up, you know, march up to him, you know, and of course, you know, I have to salute. So I salute him uh, and I say, yes, sir. And he goes, uh, what happened, lad? And I said, well, sir, we got into a bit of a tiff at Bally's. And he goes, uh, 
how'd you do lad? And I said, well, sir, you know, we gave as good as we took. And all he does is clap me on the shoulder and go, good effort, mate, fall in. And I'm like, wow, these guys are not like U.S. Marines. Okay, then. So I fall into formation. You know, we start our training evolution for the week and everything goes, you know, pretty swimmingly. We haven't, you know, we're working hard. These guys are really, really, really tough folks. Well, here comes Friday night. So we're sitting, you know, in the barracks room. We're just going to be chill now because we don't want to cause any more problems. I get a knock on the door. Knock, 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 knock. I open the door. Here comes a Royal Marine, one of the commandos. And he goes, all right, mate, you ready to go? And I said, uh, where are we going? And he goes, ah, we're going back into town, mate. And I said, what? And he goes, ah, we're going to go fuck those guys up. And I said, what are you talking about? Their color sergeant had gotten one of the trucks, the actual military trucks, had loaded it up with the Royal Marines and was driving them back into town to go get revenge for them beating up us. I swear to God, these guys were absolutely insane. Their lives revolved around this type of lifestyle. Absolutely great guys. But um, they were very, very, very tough guys. Didn't take any smack. Um, their training, man, was just tough. I mean, they had uh, what we call military operations and urban terrain. They call fibula, which is fighting in built up areas, right? And so they had an entire neighborhood that they had bought uh, the, the government had bought and they would use this to practice, you know, fighting in urban areas. And I mean, um, safety was secondary to hard training and they would train hard. And, and the one thing that always struck me about the Royal Marines that was really interesting is, man, you'd be out there in the middle of nowhere patrolling and, you know, whatever. And they'd, you know, halt, get you down, circle you up. And next thing you know, somebody's in the middle and they're having a brew up. They would, you know, they always have to have a brew up, always had to have tea. Uh, the other thing that always struck me about them is, you know, we were out there one day and uh, supply didn't come through, right? We didn't get our, our supply drop. Not a big deal, man. One, one Marine happened to have a single can of beans that he had brought along. And you know what, though? He opened that single can of beans, took out his uh, spork, and everybody got a, a bite of that can of beans. Those guys are truly brothers. Um, so very, very impressive guys, very tough guys. You know, they, they grow up playing uh, what we call soccer, right? Football uh, and rugby. So they're, you know, their legs are massive. You know, Americans, we like to lift weights, play football. You know, we tend to have bigger upper bodies. Those guys have tree trunk legs. You know, they can put a hundred pounds on their back and they can, you know, walk those, you know, we, we call it in the Marine Corps humping a pack. They call it yomping. Those guys can yomp forever. Um, you know, I've still got my, uh, Unfortunately, I've got a green screen behind me, so it looks blue, but it's uh, the, their green beret or what they call a berry, but uh, it's a beret, you know, the Royal Marine beret. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Really, really tough guys. And I was fortunate. I dated a, a young Wren, Women's Royal Naval, Naval Service woman years, years, years ago, 30 years ago. And uh, she kind of introduced me originally to the Royal Marines, and then I had a chance to, to work with them. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just felt uh, it was a, kind of an interesting story, and I've had a chance to work with them over the years and had a lot of respect. And I happened to be looking at some podcasts yesterday, and there's a, a Royal Marine I follow that has a podcast that was watching the 101st Airborne do some of their drops, and he was kind of taken aback. And I said, you know, it's kind of interesting watching foreign services reflect on how other services do things. And I thought I would add my own two cents in there and, and comment on uh, my own experience with, with the commandos and, and how they work. And, you know, certainly as Americans, we're, we're a little bit um, spoiled. You know, our equipment, you know, we, we get top tier equipment. Um, you know, we get all the technology, everything else. Sometimes, um, you know, our NATO counterparts don't get that top tier gear. Uh, but what they do make up for is just grit and drive determination really disciplined training their training methods a little bit different you know in the u.s marine corps everything is about um from boot camp on and we've all seen the movies you know in your face yelling high level of discipline everything else you, you don't get that in the royal marines when you go there you know if you do something wrong they're not going to get in your face and scream and yell they're going to say hey mate uh give me 50 press-ups just like that and you're just expected to get down and do 50 press ups, you know, um, you know, they're, they're not about getting in your face and yelling and screaming. They're just about, Hey mate, you, you made a mistake. Give me 50 press ups. You just get down, you know, what they call press ups. We call push ups. You just get down and you give them your 50 or hundred press ups or whatever the case is. Um, 
so the, the training methodology a little bit different mentality is a little bit different is a lot more self i think discipline type focused uh very very tough folks very tough training their training is you know fully of you know 52 weeks long a full year long to be a, a qualified commando uh, i think it's a great training very very tough guys so overall super impressed with them had a great time that's but one story with them Gosh, they, uh, you know, one of the other things, a good story I had, we, we had a field day towards the end, right? So to kind of, uh, you know, show camaraderie as we're getting towards the end, they said, hey, let's let's play some sports. We'll play some sports. You guys are good at, we'll play some sports. We're good at, and probably one of the funniest things is um, trying to watch a bunch of Royal Marines play American softball, right? Because they play very good at cricket, but American softball, they weren't so great at that. Um, we played rugby. And of course, we're out there playing rugby, and I remember I'm out there, and it, it's getting a, a bit chippy, right? You've got Americans that are used to playing American football, and you've got these Royal Marines that are really good at rugby, and you know we're hitting each other pretty hard. It's getting pretty chippy, and I remember uh, this one Royal Marine captain and I, about the same size, we're getting really chippy with each other and hitting each other really hard and everything. And I was like, after the game, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm gonna call him out, whatever. And uh, as we're walking off the pitch, he's like, uh, you know, good game, mate. And I was like you're not mad. And this is where I learned about kind of how rugby works, right? You leave everything on the pitch. You don't, you don't get angry. It's just, Hey, you leave it on the pitch. And I was like, wow, that's a, that's a really positive attitude. That's the way it should be. You know, you can be chippy on the pitch. You can get whatever you leave the pitch and it's all done. Um, but it was really funny. Yeah. Watching them play softball was hilarious. Watching us get our rear ends kicked at uh, soccer <laughs> rugby was really interesting. And then the last night we were there, um, you know, I don't know if I should tell this story, but I will. Um, so a couple of the Royal Marine, you know, the commandos grabbed me because I, I seemed to get along with, with them. We seemed to have a similar mentality. And they said, you're going out with us. And I said, okay, fine. Well, uh, I will tell you, U.S. Marines like to think that they know how to drink. Um, trust me. Trust me. Do not ever try to keep up with a Royal Marine. I don't care who you are or an Australian for that matter, but certainly not a Royal Marine. You know, so we go out to the bar. I don't even know where we went out to. I don't even know where we went out to. But I remember waking up on the floor of the C-130, the deck of the C-130, as we're flying back to the United States the next morning. That's all I remember is somehow I got on the deck of the C-130. Somehow we're flying back to the United States. I get there. I meet my girlfriend and uh, in Virginia. And this is back before digital cameras. And so I had a whole bunch of rolls of film. And I said, hey. I've got to develop this film. She's like, cool. So we go to the mall, one of those little photo shops, and I drop off like five rolls of film, and we come back to get them, and they're staring at me. And they're like, we couldn't develop this film. And I'm like, why not? They just hand me a bunch of negatives, and I start looking at the negatives. I'm not going to describe what's on the negatives. Suffice it to say, the Royal Marines left me with some parting gifts that, um, yeah, yeah they they had a good time with my camera and uh yeah they left me with some parting gifts so overall fun funny man uh, great sense of humor uh very tough man you know don't take any guff from anybody tremendous warriors uh you can read numerous stories about them in iraq afghanistan everywhere else just very very tough people but my own experience with them was nothing nothing but positive nothing but positive overall i don't believe the kamaki groups around anymore i believe they were responsible for um, protecting uh the nuclear assets in the submarines up in scotland and i think they've disbanded that group obviously the commandos are still around the foral commandos four two commandos but uh, again just wanted to i thought it would be an interesting story people seem to like these but uh yeah if you get a chance do your uh, research on the you know, His Majesty's Royal Marine Commandos. Of course, the most famous commando that's around right now is, I believe, Prince Harry is a, a commando. I believe he's commando qualified. But um, yeah, take, take a look at their history. Very, very interesting history. And uh, again, thank you for listening. We're going to have some great guests coming on. I've got a couple that have reached out to me, a couple of my own Marine Corps brothers and, and Navy brothers that want to be on. So uh, again, appreciate you guys listening and uh, stay tuned. Going to keep, gonna keep uh, publishing as long as people keep listening. Thanks, guys.